Okay, so we are back again. So whenever starting uh, that uh, your next lecture, just starting from the beginning of the previous one, right? Some uh, uh, just so that uh, things will be easier for all of us. So the flux linkage equation, then psi d, psi q, and psi zero. This already we have seen in the previous lecture, but just uh, we have to move further. So psi d will be minus l d i d plus l a f d i f d plus l a k d i k d after your transformation. Then psi q also will be minus l q i q plus l a k q i k q, and psi zero will be minus l zero i zero, right? So now next uh, we will see the rotor flux linkages in d q zero component, right? So substitution of the expression for i d i q in equations 53 to 55, if you make everything, then we will find that psi f d will become l f f d i f d plus l f k d i k d minus 3 by 2 l a f d i d. What I suggest that whenever you will listen to the lecture, you please keep the list of nomenclature with you, because so many terms are there, right? like your mutual inductance between stator and rotor, then self inductance of stator, self inductance of the rotor circuit. right? So, similarly, your psi k d will be l f k d i f d plus l k k d i k d minus 3 by 2 l a k d i d. And similarly, psi k q will be l k k q i k q minus 3 by 2 l a k q i q. Now, question is that if we if we put everything in the 3 into 3 matrix form and simplify, you will get like this. But as uh, to save the time, directly I have written all these things, right? Otherwise, it will take long time. Uh, but as an exercise, you please try yourself. You will find hardly it will take few minutes to derive that. So again, all the inductances are seen to be constant. That is, they are independent of the rotor position. Here, the psi f d, psi k d, and your psi k q, they are independent of theta, right? So it should, however, be noted that the saturation effects are not considered here. We will not consider the saturation effects throughout, right? So now. It is interesting to note that I 0 does not appear in the rotor flux linkage equation. This is because 0 sequence component of armature current do not produce the MMF across the air gap. This should you, this you should keep it in your mind. Now, while the d q 0 transformation has resulted in constant inductance in equation 64 to 69, right, they are independent of theta, the mutual inductances between stator and rotor quantities are not reciprocal. Reciprocal means for example, when you have studied say transformer, when you make per unit values, then either it is referred to primary or referred to secondary, it is same per unit values, but in this case it is not, right. So, later we will see, we have to, we will we will see some mechanisms such that both can be uh, your made it same, I mean either to the stator side or to the rotor side, right, when you will uh, your make the per unit uh, system analysis. For example, the mutual inductance associated with the flux linking the field winding due to the current I d flowing in the d x stator winding from equation 67 is 3 by 2 L A f d, right. Whereas, if you look into equation 64, you will find the mutual inductance associated with flux linking the d x stator winding due to field current is L A f d. It is 3 by 2 L A f d and it is L A f d. So, it is not reciprocal, reciprocal means they are not same, right. So, this problem is overcome by appropriate choice of the power unit system for the rotor quantities that we will see later. Now, next is this already we have seen in the previous lecture, but started with this only. So, stator voltage equation in d q 0 component. Now, equation 26 to 26 are basic equation for phase voltages right that we have seen earlier in terms of phase flux linkages and current. By applying the d q 0 transformation of equation 59, the following expressions in terms of the transform components of voltage, flux linkage and current results. I mean, I mean all the derivations not putting it here, because it is a, it will, I told you again and again that it will take long time. I suggest you try to make yourself and certain things you should keep it in your mind. For example, this is you should keep it in your mind. For example, then in this case what will happen? E d will become p psi d minus psi q p theta minus r a i d. Right. So, this is p is d dt, so it is d of dt psi d, right. So, this is uh, later it is explained, this is actually one term called psi or transformer induced voltage, this is p theta that is d theta by dt that is speed voltages, right. And similarly, e q is p psi q plus psi d p theta minus r a i q 
and E0 will be P psi 0 minus R A into I 0. This is equal to 70, 71 and 72. This is actually keep it in your mind, but try to derive of your own. All derivations are not given here because it will consume then many hours, right. So, the angle theta as defined in figure 9 earlier I told you, right. Uh, and you see the figure 9 also, everything is drawn there that angle between the axis of phase A and the d axis, the term phi theta in the above equation actually it is will re it is represent, I will come to that, I will come to that, right. That your the angular velocity omega of the rotor that is d theta upon d t is equal to omega r and, and omega r will be basically omega s because it is a synchronous machine, right. So, for a 60 hertz system under steady state condition p theta will be omega r is equal to omega s because it is your both are same. So, it will be 377 electrical radian per second. Now, the above equation have a form similar to those of a static coil except for the psi 2 p theta and psi d p theta terms, right. The result from the transformation from a stationary to a rotating reference frame and your and your what you call that represent the fact that a flux wave rotating in synchronism with the rotor will create voltages in the stationary armature coil, right. Similarly, this for example, the psi q p theta and psi d p theta, psi q p theta means psi q into d theta d t and similarly, psi d p theta means psi d into d theta d t, right. Are terms referred to as the speed voltages because it is d theta d t in general, right, due to the flux changes in space voltages and that is your due to the flux and your p psi d and p psi q we call transformer voltages due to the flux change in time because we know d psi by d t. So, it is p d psi d means uh, your d psi d d t and this is d psi t uh, d, d psi q d t, right. So, the speed voltage terms are the dominant components of the stator voltage that is d theta by d t term. Under steady state condition, the transformer voltage terms p psi d and p psi q are in fact equal to 0, right. So, there are many transient conditions where the transformer voltage terms can be dropped from the stator voltage equation without causing error of any significance, right. However, in other situations they could be important, right. This is actually just hold on. So, uh -huh. just hold on, just hold on. So, in this case what happened that your however, in other situations that this is something written section 3.7 5.1 it is not for you right. Now, now the signs associated with the speed voltage terms in equation 70 and 71 are related to the sign conventions assumed for the voltage and flux linkage relationship and to the assumed relative position of d and q axis right. Uh, we have seen the q axis actually leading the d axis by 90 degree. The voltage eq in the q axis is induced by the flux in the d axis right. Similarly, the voltage E d is induced by a flux in an axis lagging the d axis by 90 degree that is the negative q axis. Therefore, the voltage induced in the q axis due to rotation will be plus omega psi d and, and that in the d axis will be minus omega psi q. This should you keep it in your mind. Now, electrical power and torque. Now, the instantaneous three phase power output of the stator is that generally we know P t is equal to E i A plus E B i B plus E C i C. Now, if you uh, if you make this all these same to your transformation D and E Q x your D Q 0 transformation eliminating phase voltage and current in terms of D Q 0 components. I mean you substitute all right wherever E A i A E B i B E C i C all in terms of your D Q component and if you simplify then you will get P by 2 will be 3 by P t will be 3 by 2 into E d i d plus E q i q plus 2 E 0 i 0 73. This also you should keep it in your mind. It will be 3 by 2 into E d i d plus E q i q plus 2 E 0 i 0. After making all this all the substitute all and simplify then only you will get this one right. And under balance operation E 0 i 0 is equal to 0. Therefore, the expression for power is given by 3 by 2 E d i d plus E q i q right. Now, using equation 70 to 70, 70 to 72 right to express the voltage component in terms of flux linkage 
and current by recognizing omega r as the rotor speed at d theta by d t and rearranging we have. Now, here what you do that E d E q expressions are known to you, you put everything in this expression because that is equation your uh, 70, 71 and 72 put every everything and you substitute here. If you do so, you will get this term 3 by 2 into your i d p psi d plus i q p psi q plus 2 i 0 p psi 0 um, plus psi d i q minus psi q i d into omega r plus minus in bracket i d square plus i q square plus 2 i 0 square bracket close into r a. This is equation 74, this expression you will get, but each term has separate meaning. For example, the first term that is your i d p psi d plus i q p psi q plus 2 i 0 p psi 0, this is actually rate of change of armature magnetic energy, right? this is the first term. Now, second term is more important, second term is psi d i q minus psi q i d into omega r, this is actually second term is the power transfer across the air gap, this transfer uh, this term is the power transfer your transform across the air gap and third one that is i d square plus i q square plus 2 i 0 square into r a, this is nothing but the armature resistance loss. So, this is the first term has some significance, second term also, third term also that is why it is written first term is rate of change of armature magnetic energy plus second term is power transfer across the air gap of the machine and third term is the armature resistance loss. Right. Now, therefore, the air gap torque we know P in general power is equal to torque into speed, angular speed that we know. Right. Therefore, the air gap torque T is obtained by dividing the power transfer across the air gap that is power corresponding to the speed voltages. That means, this term, this is the second term, second term is the power, second term is the power, then if we want to make it torque, so it will be T is equal to 3 by 2 psi d i q minus psi q i d into omega r upon your omega mechanical, because this is your power and power generally we know torque into speed. So, T into omega mechanical is equal to 3 by 2 psi d i q minus psi q i d omega r, that means this term, this term, this second term, this second term, right, this second term. So, that means this is my torque equation. So, uh, or you can simplify omega r upon omega mechanical, earlier we have seen this is nothing but the number of field poles by 2. So, it will be 3 by 2 psi d i q minus psi q i d into P f by 2, right, this is equation 75. Now, the flux linkage equation that is 64 to 69 associate with the stator and rotor circuit together with the voltage equation that is 70 to 72 for the stator and the voltage equation 50 to 52 for the rotor and the torque that is equation 75 actually describes the electrical dynamic performance of the machine in terms of dq0 component. So, all this equation basically 64 to your 75 all these equations actually represent the dynamics of the uh, equation related to the dynamics of the machine, much more detail we will see later. right? Now, physical interpretation of d q 0 transformation, why we do so? That is, the, that is the physical interpretation. Now, combined MMF wave due to the currents in the three armature phases travels along the periphery of the stator at a velocity of omega s radian per second. right? This is also the velocity of the rotor because the rotor is in synchronous speed. Therefore, for balanced synchronous operation, the armature MMF wave appears stationary with respect to the rotor and has a sinusoidal space distribution. This also we have discussed before, right? Since a sine function can be expressed as a sum of two sine functions, right? The MMF, this also we have seen the MMF wave, MMF D axis, MMF Q axis, right? the MMF due to stator windings can be resolved into two sinusoidally distributed MMF wave stationary with respect to the rotor. So, the one has its peak over the d axis and the other has its peak over the q axis, this diagram we have seen earlier also. right? Therefore, it may be interpreted as the instantaneous current in a fictitious armature winding which rotates at the same speed as the rotor and remains in such a position that is axis always coincide with the d axis. The value of the current in this winding is such that it results in the same MMF on the d axis as do actual phase current flowing in the armature windings. A similar interpretation applies also to I q except that it acts on the q axis instead of the d axis. This certain thing, this is the physical interpretation the MMF due to I d and I q are stationary with respect to the rotor, right? 
and acts on paths of constant permeance. Therefore, your corresponding ins your, ins your inductances L d and L q that is d axis and q axis are constant. For balanced steady state conditions, the phase currents may be written as follows. Right? We can write I a is equal to I m sin omega s t plus phi, I b is equal to I m sin omega s t plus phi minus 2 pi by 3 and I c is equal to I m sin omega s t plus phi plus 2 pi by 3 this is 76, this is 77 and this is 78. right? Now, we know omega, is, omega s is equal to 2 pi f that is that angular frequency of the scatter current. right? Using the d q 0 transformation, so this one you if you go for a d q 0 transformation then this equation i d can be written as i m sin omega s t plus phi minus theta because here also your omega s t plus phi. right? Now, when you go for d q transformation i d will be i m sin omega s t plus phi minus theta. Similarly, i q will be minus i m cos omega s t plus phi minus theta this is equation 80 and i 0 will be 0 that is equation 81. Now, we know that because your what you call machine rotates in synchronous speed. So, basically theta is equal to omega r t is equal to omega s t that means, for synchronous operation the rotor speed omega r is equal to the angular frequency omega s of the scatter current right same thing. Therefore, theta is equal to omega r t is equal to omega s t that means, here if you put theta is equal to omega s t theta is equal to omega s t then omega s t omega s t will be cancelled only sin phi will be there and cos phi will be there. So, I d is equal to I m sin phi. So, it is a constant and similarly I q is equal to minus I m cos cos phi that is also constant as if they are D C current as if they are D C current right. For balanced steady operation I d and I q are constant right. So, in other words alternating phase current in the A B C reference frame appear as direct current in the D q 0 reference frame right. This is your this is that physical interpretation of your uh, d q 0 transformation. right? Now, the d q 0 transformation may be viewed as a means of referring the scatter quantity to the rotor side. This is advantageous to referring secondary side quantities in a transformer to the primary side by means of the trans ratio. So, the inverse transformation that is equation 60 can similarly be viewed as a referring to the ro rotor quantities to the scatter side. Right? The analysis of synchronous machine equations in terms of d q 0 variable is considerably simpler than the terms of phase quantities in the following reason. Some advantages are there for d q 0 transformation. First one is the dynamic performance equation have constant inductances this is the major advantage as right. Uh, next is for balanced condition 0 sequence quantities disappear right. For balanced steady state operation the scatter quantities have constant values for other modes of operation they may vary with time and stability studies involve your slow variations having frequencies below uh, uh, your 2 or 3 hertz right. And fourth one the parameters associated with d and q axis may be directly measured from your terminal test right. So, these are the four major advantages for d q 0 transformation. Next is the power unit representation. In power system analysis, you have already studied the power unit representation, right? But here for synchronous machine, the although we will follow the same thing, but power unit representation will be slightly different, right? And wholeheartedly, we will try to understand this. Certain things I will tell you, certain things small derivation I will leave up to you also to save some time, but uh, just see how things are the power unit representation. Now, qu your quantity in power unit can be defined as actual quantity by base value of the quantity this you know. Now, power unit system for the scatter quantity right. Now, let us choose the following quantities for scatter denoted by subshift s right. So, we have to choose some your what you call your base quantity for example, E s base this is actually peak value of rated line to neutral voltage in volt right. Then I s base it is peak value of rated line current that is ampere and f base that is rated frequency in hertz right. So, this base value. Now, the base values of the remaining quantities are automatically set and depend on the above as follows. For example, omega base here also we need some omega base it will be 2 pi f base that is electrical radian per second. 
then omega mechanical base right that is omega base into 2 by field poles right T f. So, that is your mechanical radian per second. Now, if it is if it is so then z s base will be now E s base upon I s base the basically z is equal to V by I you know. So, z s base is equal to E s base upon I s base this is ohm right. Now, L s base L s base will be your z s base upon omega base hence this right. So, actually when you find out actually we are going to be making the base quantities when you try to find out say reactance of a line right you have to do we make L omega right L omega is the reactance. So, so here also if you multiply L s base and omega base that actually in per unit we want to represent. So, we represent L s base and into omega base is equal to z s base right instead of your reactance type will this is actually z s base right dimensionally you have to see the correct thing. So, L s base will be z s base upon omega base this is in Hendy's. Now, psi s base that is the flux linkages we know psi is equal to L i right that means, psi s base will be L s base into I s base right and this is your L s base and another thing is that can be written as E s base upon omega s base right. So, this is this is also this is also your known to known to you right because you know E is equal to your d psi by d t in general dimension wise right. So, this one we make, make E s base upon omega s base. So, L s base into I s base is equal to E s base upon omega s this is over tons right. Now, now next is 3 phase volt ampere base. So, 3 phase volt ampere base means we will take 3 into E R m s base into I R m s base that is the R m s value of the voltage and R m s value of the current this capital E R m s right. So, this can be written as 3 into E R m s base will be E s base upon root 2 because we have chosen this your E s base the peak value of the rated line to neutral voltage similarly for the current peak value of rated line current. So, when you take capital E R m s right. So, basically this is this E R m s base we can write E s base upon root 2 and I R m s we could write I s base upon root 2. So, root 2 root 2 2 will be the 2. So, 2 2 will be your what you call it will be then 3 by 2 E s base into I s base volt ampere this is your 3 phase volt ampere base right. Now, torque base we know torque base is equal to in general we know power is equal to speed into torque right, but we are trying to represent the base quantities. So, torque base will be 3 phase volt ampere base divided by omega mechanical base right. So, if you you an E s this your what you call this E s I s base right here it is e, your what you call here it is given that your this is your just hold on uh, this is your uh, psi s base is equal to given that is L s I s base into I s base and it is equal to E s base upon omega base. So, here also when you write torque is equal to your 3 phase V a base by omega mechanical base. So, in this case this uh, 3 phase volt ampere base is 3 by 2 E s base I s base you substitute here 3 by 2 E s base I s base and this is your omega mechanical base just simplify this one just simplify this one you will get 3 by 2 P f by 2 psi s base into I s base that is Newton your meters right. So, here already it is given something is given that your uh, what you call psi s base is equal to L s base I s base everything is given right just you please uh, just to substitute and just to bring this one that it will be psi s base into I s base just math just little bit to manipulate you put this one you put this one E s base and I s base and just to make this one omega base uh, your what you call omega r upon omega s base relationship you put it here and then little bit to simplify you will get 3 by 2 P f by 2 psi s base psi s base Newton per meter this is your what you call a an exercise small exercise for you right. So, this is your torque base next is next is power unit scatter voltage equation we will come now after making all this small thing we will come to this one. So, from equation 70 this is the equation E d is equal to P psi d minus psi q omega r minus r a i d. Now, we have to make the power unit scatter voltage equation right we have to convert it. So, you what you can do is dividing throughout e by E s base and noting that E s base is equal to I s base into Z s base is equal to omega a base into psi s base. So, if you divide both side E d by E s base. So, this side also you can divide both side that E s base is equal to know that I s base Z s base. So, that is your what you call 
that you are this is my p psi d. So, the both side we are dividing by E s base. So, E d by E s base then this term when you are taking p psi d we are making it as i s base you are what you call omega, omega base then psi s base. So, this term divided by uh, omega s base here here I have made miss s here here here, here right. So, your this thing is omega s base psi s base and for the second term second term psi q omega s here also we are making psi s base omega s base and last term it is a voltage drop r a i d right what we are doing is we are making your z s base i s base because e s base is equal to z s base. So, this term also e s base this term also e s base, but we have to make it par unit form and this relationship we are using this relationship we are using right. So, with this with this if you do so then what we will see we will see that this e d e d upon e s base now e d upon it is a power unit. So, we are making e d bar. So, this is actually e d bar after making all the power units again we will remove the bar and from that onwards we will understandable that everything is in power unit that I will tell you later e d bar and this is your psi d upon psi s base. So, this is psi d bar p into psi d bar then right and into 1 upon omega base and this one psi q upon psi s base this is basically psi q bar and omega r upon omega s base that is basically omega r bar and this one minus r a upon z s base. So, power unit so r a power unit is r a bar and i d upon i s base this is i d bar. So, all these things your what you call e d bar is equal to this equation your what you call the power unit whenever putting bar means these are power unit values right because ultimately you will find at the later stage things are very simple and we will make it all everything in power unit. The, the unit of time in the above equation is second right, but most in literature also you will find we generally use time in second, but I will show you if you want power unit also time can be represented by power unit time right. So, time also can be expressed in power unit with the base value equal to the time required for the rotor to move one electrical radian at circular speed right. So, so what we can do is that T base actually 1 upon omega base because uh, generally omega is a radian per second radian is a dimensionless quantity. So, it is radian per second. So, T base you will take omega 1 upon omega base that is nothing but your second right that is 1 upon 2 pi f base right this is equation 84 with the time in per unit equation 83 it may be written as E d bar is equal to P bar psi d bar minus psi q bar omega r minus r a bar i d bar even time also P P bar p is d d t that is also you are converting in power unit how I will show you uh, next lecture I am coming back ok thank you very much we will be back.